Hello and welcome back to another YouTube video and listen to this if your explorer is making this noise in the back I have the video for you. After listening and feeling where I think I'm hearing the noise, I'm going to say it is behind that plastic where the wheel well is, but to get to it, we have to first start by removing this plastic at the rear gate opening up at the roof, step number one. And if you notice, there's no screws or nothing that hold it, it's only clips. I just carefully worked my fingers in behind and pulled carefully that I didn't break the tabs, and same with the piece of plastic over the rear uh, left post at the rear and then we have to take and want to fold the middle seat down and we're going to access this one on the, the other post here at the back yeah this vehicle is my mother's but i drive it occasionally and the times it makes that noise and the times it don't and it's it don't hurt nothing how it runs but it's extremely irritating listening to and i've had enough of it Okay, now we have the post on the C-pillar off. Now I'm going to take and fold the middle seat up out of the way, which is convenient enough to do. And now we've got to take and remove the seat belt where it is bolted here to the dog leg area, the rear, I mean, towards the inside of the vehicle. And if you notice, I tried holding it up that you can see the size. It's a 50 millimeter. And not surprising, it's not easily turning out because, gee, look at that. It's in the... Well, well, where all the rust and that's been accumulating on that bolt for since it's been built. But we'll spray it up with a little PB blaster and maybe a little more, and we'll try this again and see what happens. I've had bad luck on over the years trying to get seatbelt bolts with these Torx head rounding them out and breaking the Torx, but I do believe it's starting to move, so we're going to be lucky on that. And by the way, that bit I'm using it came from Harbor Freight I've had good luck with those I've have over the years bought more expensive Torx bits to cost a lot more money and broke them a lot faster and I've had this for about a year now this set and used it a couple times and it seems to keep working Okay, we just about have this and just take and turn it out. Now I don't even need the ratchet and just grab the the socket with my fingers and turn it the rest of the way out and that's out of the way. And you can see well that was the P B blaster did good, but you can still see it's rust on it even after all that. Now we can just fish the seat belt through the hole in the plastic that was over the C pillar of the vehicle. And Okay, that's taken out, and now we're going to, this just pries up this kick pad where you get in the rear left door. And as you can see, once that kick pad is up, the butter strip and just easily pulled out. Now we're just going to take the cover off the jack, where the jack sits, and then we're going to take and turn out the hardware that holds the third seat in. Furthermore, this that I'm removing now is just an 8 millimeter head. Small fastener. It's, this does not actually hold the seat in. This just holds the, like a metal bracket, which you'll see later, that has a piece of Velcro on that keeps between the seat and the area where that jack cover goes. So it's nice and neat. It has carpet instead of an open area. And there I'm going to remove the other 8 millimeter head bolt it's on the other side of it and furthermore they're turning out easy and on that if they wouldn't they're pretty small they snap off but yeah I had no problem getting them turned out and take the last few threads and now we're going to pop the seat cushion for the third seat which is easy there's like a latch you just pull towards the right and same with the other which this one actually you would say you'd be going to the left but you just slide those and then you lift up the seat cushion for that third seat and now it comes and that the seat cushion itself is light as a feather there's now the other part when we get to where the backrest is is another story okay that's moved out again and now we can get to the rest of the hardware that holds the 
backrest in the seat. And we're starting here with a, another, again, just a small 8mm head bolt. Yeah, these small bolts are, take forever to turn out. They're, they're such fine thread and they're very long, but it's about out now. But it seems like it's an eternity while you're turning them out. Now I showed you an example of what I meant by the fine thread. And now we'll have to just turn the one out on the left side of the Explorer. side and take and now we can proceed to actually get the this is now is the serious hardware that actually holds the seat cushion or actually meant to say the backrest of the seat which I get is just still a cushion however you want to look at it And if you notice, these are pretty tight, and I believe there is, they are a 15 millimeter head, at least on this one. Now I have it up out some, I'm gonna try spraying it. As far as spraying it underneath, you can't access it. It sits up, there's like a subframe welded to the floor of the Explorer, you can't get to it. But that little bit of the PB blasters working down in is helping. And finally, mission accomplished, and it's out, so we'll just proceed. We'll go do the one on the right side now. And as with the one on the left side, I'm going to spray some PB Blaster, let it soak down in. Yeah, unfortunately, as I mentioned, because it sits up in that channel that's welded to the floor, there's no access to it. You can't, again, spray from underneath. And heaven forbid, which I didn't, wouldn't want to, it'd be a real pain if you'd break one off. <laughs> Your only alternative one would snap off would be drilling it out and probably retapping it. I do have a video, which was pretty tedious conditions, I'll put a link up there on it, on drilling, I broke an exhaust manifold bolt working on a car and I drilled it out on the car and tapped it, but that would be your alternative. accomplished and it's out now we can take we can get back here we're going to fold the seat down like you would be if you'd be loading stuff and we still have have some more hard hardware to remove uh, here's a nut and we have to take and access that which now with the that piece move that metal piece there's small bolts out you can get in on it with a deep well socket and on the good news here, once we get on this with the ratchet, this should turn off a lot easier than the bolts this nut since it's a stud that's protected inside of the vehicle. Oh well, yeah, that's definitely not near the issue. And it's turning right off since it was not exposed to the weather. And there 
was the nut off. And we'll do the one on the other side. And as you heard first, when it, again, it was a lot easier to remove in those bolts up front. One of the first things, it's actually been fairly easy to remove on this as far as fasteners go. One good turn deserves the other. There's the other one out. Now, the back seat cushion will lift out. It's sort of a heavy, clumsy thing, this part of it. Unlike the cushion, was like this is sort of bulky, but out it is. I have it out of my way. Now we have to remove another seatbelt bolt to get this plastic off the side of the vehicle. And this one seems to be going better than the first one. And there is the seatbelt bolt out for the seatbelt, the shoulder harness for the rear seat. And you take notice, there's like a tab that'll want to go in one way, which in the reassembly part of this video, you'll see. And there's the hole that, where that tab sits in. And then actually the bolt that's threaded I'm pointing to now for the bolt. Now that that's off, we can take and get this plastic for the rear post completely out of the way and we're soon about where we need to be to get this last large piece of plastic off the rear that'll access the rear heater assembly where I'm thinking this sound is I'm certain coming from. Although one last piece of trim plastic here I have to remove and this is at the bottom where the gate shuts across the back and this is sort of just a similar deal it's just those clips that hold down in just try to pull up carefully without breaking the clips and I on this did do good I'm working inside it is actually a cold day in a heated garage and that's off and now here we are to the main piece of plastic over the rear quarter panel well with the seat and all out of our way I'm just crawling the back here and this also just holds in with those clips but there's going to be again more of them because it's over a larger area it's a large piece of plastic but again once it's a lot of stuff to move to access and once you're actually down to it there isn't much but there's one small catch before it's ready to come out completely and when i lean it here to the side is this wire for the rear you can lock and unlock the doors from the rear of the vehicle Probably all of them have that, at least it had power door locks, and I think about everything at this point does, but if yours don't, well, you don't have to do it, and I just took a little screwdriver, released the wire clip, and it's free, and now there is our heater assembly. You can see a blower motor and everything, just a general overview here before we go further. Okay, the next step we have to do, this is fairly simple, is move this little short piece of duct work that comes out of the heater assembly in the rear and goes up into the roof to spread again your rear heat and air conditioning and that sort of push up and pull down and out it comes now there is bolts that hold this heater assembly and we're going to take and remove the first one you can see here easy to access at the top Okay, that one is out. Now there's one back here in the corner facing towards the rear of the vehicle. And again, not really hard to get to. I'm using about a six inch long extension. and a, I'm using a deep socket. You don't need a deep socket for this. But it was handy. Now there is one more fastener to remove, but instead of a bolt, it's a nut and it's a 13 millimeter up towards the front, right behind that rear door post to remove. And you take notice, even while we're removing it, this the last one, it's already moving some. And when we actually get this loosened and out of the way, we're going to just be pulling this back a little bit out of the way, but not removing it completely, because remove it completely would mean you'd have to remove the rear heater hoses and the AC lines, which I'd 
you don't have to do to access this next step. Now, you take and grab it, and it just sort of, again, you can get a pull back way. And here is the, there is two actuators back here, uh, heater actuators. Now, in my case, the noise was coming from the one that's towards the rear, right there where I'm touching. Now, your problem could be in the outer room, but that sound I was having you listen to at the beginning, this is that one that is the problem. Now, interestingly, now here is the new one I have to replace. That shaft on it, on the one I needed, it's like a D-shape. Now, I ordered the wrong part first, and the first one I had had like a key notch way in it, a key way. And it, was, it would be the other one, but it's not the one I needed. I'll try to give the link in the description if I've been a while ago since I bought this, if it's still available for the correct one, if yours is the same problem. Now, we're just plugging the... Wear in first, just making sure it does fit into the new one. And I want to try sitting it down with the wire in, but that isn't going to work. The problem with the wire connector, it don't give you enough leeway to start the shaft in the hole. At least I found it a problem. So after, again, a few failed attempts of trying to start that into where it belongs in the heater box, the actuator, I'm going to take here and take another round at it, minus the wire holding you back and then you I'm trying to show you as good as I can here and have it once you get it started in the hole if it only goes one way it should and there it goes it pushes the end to place Hey, there I started the first one. I'm going to give it a few more turns here with this little palm ratchet that I have. But before I tighten it the whole way, I'm going to get this other one started in. There's three actually in total. These first two aren't so bad to get to. I do apologize. I usually showed this assembly, but I thought I was recording when I took the old one out, and it did not record. Uh, again, I had a new action camera, and I wasn't using it properly, but at least, yeah, pretty much, you've seen how it goes in, so pretty much it came out it just opposite of the going-in procedure. And now we're tightening these up with the quarter-inch drive ratchet, the top two. Yes, without a doubt, it's not the these top two aren't bad. Now, after these are tightened, when we get to the bottom one, it is sort of a pain. Okay, that's close that. Now, this was hard to get the camera in, even to position it, but there is the last one, and we'll try to, again, I, the camera's seeing it better than I am right now, because I'm, they're sort of just working by fill, but I do believe a few turns you know it's there it's hanging in the hole by a thread and we can get the ratchet in on it here we go we can get it tightened in and that'll take care of that okay sorry about the game but at least it did get in to show you it was sort of the light was making the camera lens giving a again a glary view but there plug the bar back in now that it's all nice and in and now we're sort of down to we can start reassembling everything. And as for repositioning, it, that one that uh, has the nut and the stud instead of the bolt makes it easy once you put it on that. The bolt holes, like you see there, are lined up. And I'm going to tighten the top one up first. And next I'm going to put the nut back on the one with the stud and sit it down in the socket and get it started on. And there it goes. No problem on that. It don't matter which order you would put these back in, but I found this to work the best for myself.
then the final one here will tighten it up to host the heater assembly itself and then we'll have just the rest of it to put together which there's plenty to do we had to take a good bit of it apart to access this heater box Take notice when that's pushed down in, it goes the whole way down over most of that insulation that sits around the heater box, so it makes a good seal so your heat blows out good and your air conditioning. Now it's time for the big this quarter panel trim, the inside molding here to fish it back into place. But before we put it completely back in, don't forget if you have like this, which I'm sure most of them do, to replug in for the door locks at the back. Although I'll admit I've always used the power door lock on the door itself up front, never the rear, but in case you want to, if it's not plugged in, it's not going to work. And that is plugged back in. And now this taken, there again I'm showing you, it is for the button. But now we're going to take and line it up with the slots. The big thing when you're putting this plastic back on, it should just push in, if you notice, fairly easy. You shouldn't have to, if you're to the point you're using a hammer and that to tap it into place, well, it's not lined up. And now the water stripping sits at the outside. I'm just working back in. That had to be stubborn to go in behind the quarter panel of the upholstery. But anyhow, there it's back into place. And now we have to take, I'm trying to show you where it sits here, put the the front edge of this upholstery into place and tap it in. Why well, I'll get a light here and show you where, uh, as I am pushing it in, how it's lining it up at the hole correctly. So it does fit into place. And there's like a little groove there it sits in. Actually, that part of where the seatbelt sits and that there's a tab on. And okay, there it goes. And also, when you put this into place, make sure the seatbelt is on the the end of it's on the outside of it, so you will be eventually will need that to put the piece over the door post, the frame at the rear. And there it is, sort of an overview that much is back in, which is a large part of this. Okay, now it's time to put the plastic trim that goes over the seat belt, the one on the seat pillar, and take and got to just remember to put where it bolts to the post down there through the plastic first and then there's like a if you look here after I get it through there's like a tab at the bottom of that like a big lip that slides down in behind that large piece of plastic we installed and then get it lined up and this is a little tricky I'm going to try to show you here but at the back side of this one this is like hooks and slides down you See, there's the hole that goes into in the vehicle itself. And then that round hole that's molded into the plastic sits over that top seatbelt bolt. And now I'm actually going to also put the seatbelt that's adjustable in the lowest position first. Okay, that's basically back in, and there you can see the seat belt adjust as it should. And I'm gonna try to zoom in here, it's hard to see through it, but we use the flashlight here to give you a look at what I'm saying. That bolt head sits in that plastic molding. You can see what I was talking about. Okay, now that that much is back in, logically, and that's why it was like acting, it was far going up and down the seat belt as I didn't have the bottom of it attached yet. Then we'll put the bolt back in, which we were here earlier on disassembly. This is the one we had to spray up from the outside to the inner fender, but it's going in a lot easier than it had came out of the V. Now I'm tightening this up, I just want to take a time and say, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to post them in the comments below. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. I don't necessarily check every day, but usually worst case scenario, within a week I'll get back to you. 
and that is tighten up okay now we can take and that that done and we'll move back here and just simply put our weather stripping back in place for easy step on and on that i didn't mention them when i had taken it off you don't have to take it the whole way off i just took it off enough to declare that we could get that plastic quarter panel plastic off in the inside and just laid the rest of it out of my way and you know, put the little kick pad protection here where you get in and out of the door back in not a big thing on that has coming off this just basically pops right back in once you have the proper slots lined up with the plastic clips and now we're going to take and go and put the rear trim here at the clear plate back post first uh, we'll run the seat belt in through the hole as we had on the other one the only difference on this one you don't have to worry about it's not adjustable like the seat belt for the back seat the clear third one doesn't have that so you don't have to worry about lining that up that it'll again it's not adjustable this one mm -hmm. And before we push it into place completely, I'll just give you a quick overview like I've been trying to do on this, where it does slot into the vehicle itself, the slots for it. And there's, again, the tabs on the plastic. And, again, just sort of, you just have to line them up accordingly. And once they're in place, as you've noticed up till now, it won't go in with too much of a problem if once they're into place. Again, this interior work is not really so hard like some of the car work. And it's actually easier on this these newer cars. You don't really, per se, have any different fasteners or anything to take out. You just have to carefully pry and begin when it comes time for reassembly, push everything back into place. But there I'm taking and working the weather stripping back out. It did like when we installed the other piece. The lip of that weather stripping does sit at the top edge of the plastic that goes with the vehicle, like over the what we had just installed in that quarter panel piece earlier. Now we're going to put the little trim around the seat belt itself. And now we're going to bolt this back to the Florida seat belt. And as I was showing when uh, disassembly, that little tab sits right down into the slot in the floor and make sure the seat belt's not twisted before you tighten it in and mine's not as nice and straight we're going to tighten it now if you need a set of torx bits i'll be sure to include a link in the description as i mentioned earlier in the video i bought these at harbor freight but they were economical enough and they've been a real good set they're actually and if you've noticed i'm using a half inch drive ratchets with no adapter they're half inch drive set of the torx bits which maybe there is in the past every set i bought was for 3 8 drive ratchets but i went and bought the ones because i used to with cars use the larger sizes and it works with the half inch drive ratchet instead now we're going to take and put our trim back here at the door opening at the bottom It's not a big thing, but this has probably been the biggest problem on this is this weather stripping around this back door opening and lining all this plastic trim up. But, eh, well, you see again the aggravation is being, but just keep working with it till you get it around. At least the weather stripping is very flexible. Yeah, I hope my videos, and that's why I do make these, is the person that's willing to have some tools and willing to give. Uh, an attempt at uh, something to fix well I'll try to give you you can make the decision if you want to do it or not but again this isn't really such of a bad job a lot of stuff to take out but it's nothing really too overly difficult but you can decide one it can help you actually do your job or if you don't want to do it maybe after watching this you'll decide it's more than what you want to get involved in well it'll help you either way the video now we're going to install the trim at the back gate at the roof area. Now 
Now it's time to lift the back the seat rest for the back seat and not the cushion yet, but the main part of the seat and just get it in here and I'm going to climb in around from the front position and that way you can see what's going on with the cam and for begin with you can take where the studs go at the back and that makes it easy to line up once it sits down over the studs everything hopefully will line back up into place and now with that in I want to climb back out and walk around to the river of the Explorer again and take and push this this wasn't quite there it is now it's sitting where it should sit and after it sets in place I'm going to take and install the first nut here on the left side at the rear of this seat and once you get this one on and eventually we'll get the one on the other side then the seat won't go any place. They tighten these up first and then we'll go fight with the bolts. Again these nuts were easy when they came off so they'll go back on nice and easy. Okay, one good turn deserves another, and we we're going to go tighten one on the left side now. Okay, and that all but concludes that. Once I get the ratchet back on, it slipped off there a second and had another snugger cell. Okay, now we're going to go climb in from the front again after we take care and fold the seat back up you need the seat in the up position to access to where these bolts were I'm in the proper position here crouched down in front of the back seat to rest for the back and we'll start the bolt in and we'll soon get it a wretched here then I'm going to put the little one in first also don't forget you have the one that is actually the substantial bolt that holds it and then that little one I guess does to some degree and I'm going to tighten the large one here first. Okay that is taken care of now we're going to take and we'll just tighten the little one here on the side since I'm here this is the one that's the eight millimeter head. And one more part of it back together that is tight now we'll go put the ones in on the right side of the vehicle but of course the same two position and that we're getting a pretty much completed on this Okay, there is a large bolt tightened in. Now we're going to put the small one back in and up here to the upper side of it. For sure you're not going to mix them up because again they're two different sizes completely, the size of them, so there's no issue on that. Okay, that's done. Now we're going to step to the river of the Explorer again. And we're going to take and pull the, this metal bracket back in. I can see this is sort of a big, large piece. It stayed with the seat because of the Velcro, but this basically its whole purpose is it doesn't so much hold the seat in, but it's there to more or less have a place to use the Velcro between that flap at the bottom edge of the seat and the uh, uh, for the vehicle. As with all my videos, I try to show everything, even what seems like maybe simple. 
but I don't like to take anything for granted. And I try to be as thorough as theoretically possible in the filming and uh, everything I show on my repair videos. Again, and also I will be putting timestamps in the description to help people out if there's a certain part you want to jump to in the video. showing and on showing everything even the simplest step back down to what I've been discussing this piece of carpet here uh, I want to show you there's the velcro on the back flap of the rear seat back and there's the velcro on that metal and try to line it up as straight as possible again it's just strictly more than anything just for appearance once you put the cover for the jack back in but I try to get it all the wrinkles and such out of it and on as straight as possible. Okay, I'm fairly pleased with that. And now we're going to put the seat cushion back in, which again, like taking this out, this is light and fairly easy. Just be sure to seat belts where they latch you can put them with the notch cut out in the seat and then once it's down in place manipulate those little levers and they just slide one way or the other okay and this pretty much concludes the video i hope you found this useful please hit that thumbs up button if you liked it and consider subscribing thank you for watching